noticed about your, 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 your group right off the bat? Uh, what have I noticed about it? I got a mixed group. Uh, I noticed that it kind of makes all different types of personalities, um, all different types of skill sets. Um, so I would say I learned the most right now is that they're mixed. You know, I got a little bit of everything. You know, I got a slasher. I got big bats. That's pounders. That's third, third down short yardage guys. I got guys that can catch out of the backfield. Um, so I got a real mixed group. Excuse me, when we look through the bios of the, you know, all you guys got hired this offseason, Western Carolina shows up in a lot of them, but not in here. So what, what's sort of the connection? How did this come about uh, with Coach Bell and Coach Murray? Uh, South Florida. So back in 2019, uh, I was an analyst at South Florida, um, and then Coach Bell came on. Uh, him and Kerwin Bell uh, came on to our staff in South Florida. Um, and then they came on, and Coach Bell with the OC, and I started working with them, doing some great work with them. And me and Coach Bell, Coach K. Bell, kind of connected then. Uh, we did great work as analysts together. Uh, we built a relationship, and since then, we stayed in contact. Uh, we always talk ball together, talk recruiting together. Uh, we would see each other on the recruiting trails, and we just kind of kept that relationship going. Uh, he thought very highly of me back then, uh, enough to you know keep that relationship going. I thought the same of him, um, and it's just been that sense. And just you know, luckily that we got together back here. Now that you're working with him now, like five years later, how have you seen him grow and evolve as a play caller, game planner, and all that? Oh, he's he's evolved tremendously. You know, even working with him this small amount of time. You know, back then, you know, he was still a little wet behind the ears. You know, just still trying to figure it out. Uh, you know, he, he understood it then, but now I can just see the growth and maturity in him. You know what I mean? And he's a very he's one of the most sharpest men I've ever been around, coaches wise. Um, you know, and I just see it now, his ability to call the play so fast. And, you know, he changed a lot, too, from what he did back in 19 from an offensive standpoint. You know, he changed a lot of stuff, uh, made it a little bit more simpler for the players. Um, so I've I seen that as well, which has been tremendous help for him, obviously, because he had so much success, you know, since we left. What was the biggest unique as a running back, or how would you describe that whole and his offense? Hybrid, right? Um, they, they're called the H's in, in this offense, but I would say they're hybrids because they got to be able to do multiple things, right? They're not just the old school pound back, you know, be in an eye formation and just go down here and pound it. Like you got to be able to do multiple things. You got to be able to off pound it. You got to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield. You got to be able to line up and empty and run routes out of the backfield. Um, and that's why I love it. That's why I love it for our guys because I was that type of player myself. You know, I was a Swiss knife guy. I was able to do it all, line up wide, uh, get in the backfield, return kicks the whole nine yards. So that's what makes it different for the backs. What are the elements that you're going to have to work closest with this running back group to adapt to that system that you know? Can you repeat it? I didn't hear the first No, what, what, what are the biggest elements that you see with the current running back room and how you're going to have to adapt them to that system and as far as the skills that you're inheriting with the guys that you have? Absolutely. It's a learning curve. You know, one of the pillars of our program is knowledge. And it's a lot of stuff that they're not used to from the old offense um, and even the offense before that. So it's just going to be a huge learning curve for all of them. And, and the biggest part is just no huddle. You know, we're not going to go huddle, so they got to be able to get lined up fast and be able to process information as fast as possible. Um, so it's going to be a learning curve for all of those guys, and you know, the more reps they, they get, the better they'll be. I believe you did a coaching fellowship with the Steelers last offseason. What did you learn from that experience, and what's it like to be back in Pittsburgh? Uh, first of all, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life, to be honest. Um, Coach Mike Tomlin is, is phenomenal. Um, he, I learned so much just sitting in the staff meetings. Um, he would give us knowledge every single day, you know, just stuff about how to run the program. And, and for me, it was my first year being an offensive coordinator at Howard last season, so I was able to do that right before I went into that transition. Um, and it prepped me in so many ways from an organizational standpoint, um, from just techniques, details, you know, making routine plays routinely. I used that quote, you know, the whole year, and it helped us win a championship at Howard. Um, so I, I learned so much. And, I mean, being in Pittsburgh, uh, again, is just you know, kind of ironic. You know, but Pittsburgh is a special place. You know, I, I played here a couple times when we were back in the Big East, um, and then did that internship, and then now here I am working. You know, here in Pitt, so it's, it's special. You mentioned it being ironic. Did you ever imagine when you were here working with that fellowship that all of a sudden you'd be here now in this room? Uh, no, I didn't. You know what I mean? Because I'm always, you know, where my feet is. So I was living in that moment. You know, being with the Steelers. You know, enjoying it, embracing it, and learning. You know what I mean? Because I always knew about Pitt, you know what I mean? And I knew they shared facilities, so I always thought very highly of, of, of Pitt. Um, but yeah, it was kind of ironic because I never thought about it. You know, I was going into being an office coordinator for the first year at Howard, you know, and then just trying to take everything I could from the Steelers and take it back to my guys. You know, so when this when this opportunity came up, I was like, wow, that's 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 pretty ironic that I'm back here now in Pittsburgh. Yeah, how did being an office coordinator for a year grow your knowledge or impact your coaching? Absolutely.
absolutely. I mean, uh, Coach Larry Scott, great mentor of mine. You know, he, he uh, gave me that opportunity. Well, you know, I earned that opportunity to be the coordinator. Before that, um, I was always just a receiver guy, right? So I focused on the back end. And I'm a big tunnel vision guy. I always focused on the back end and, and my receivers and the guys. But now, you know, I was able to, to broaden my, my picture and look at a plethora of things now. Now I can look at the big picture. Now I got to focus on the offensive line. I got to focus on fronts and, 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 and stunts. And I got a game plan for that. I got to make sure the coaches are in line. I got to make sure the players are on point. Um, and now it's more so focused on the big picture. I had to, you know, be more of a, a planner and an organizer for the whole offense. You know what I mean? On a day to day basis, you know, scripts. You know, scout cards. You know, organizing all of that, that all those things, uh, kind of helped me. You know, see see defenses and offense in a whole another big picture standpoint. So, a lot of running backs coaches won't let their guys on the field, and no matter how good they are as runners, if they can't pass block, is it even more important to pass block in this offense and maybe in another offense? Oh, absolutely. The number one thing they'll see every day, and what they'll hear me say is protect. All right, protect. Um, I have three daughters. Uh, one day, you know, these young men, they're going to have kids of their own, right? And they got to protect those kids. So I tell them we're going to protect the quarterback, all right? Like, they're, like the quarterback is our own, and then we're going to protect the football. So it's pass pro is huge. I tell them if you can't block, no rock. What do you make of Rodney Hammond? What are your impressions of him so far? So far, I love Rodney. Uh, I love Rodney. He, he's been great. Um, he works. The biggest thing for me, you give me a guy that's going to work. And right now, Rodney is showing, showing me that he works. <laughs> Obviously, he's a guy that's, that's played some ball here, uh, played a lot of ball for us here. Um, but I've been impressed with just the way he worked and his attention to detail and how he comes about his business like a pro every single day. Derek Davis is a guy that, you know, made some switches when he, when he, when he came to Pitt. How, how have you seen him just in your early times working with him and the progress he's made at running back? Honestly, he's taken more on the, the vocal leadership role of the group, honestly, because uh, – He's doing stuff the right way so far. You know, he's showing up on time, which is early for us. Um, he, he's getting extra work in. He comes in to, to meet with me, you know, numerous times just to get extra work. Um, he's a, he's can, he can roll. You know, he can run. You know, we were running sprints the other day, and you know, he's beating them every single time. You know, uh, in that group. So he's been doing a, a tremendous job as well. Uh, I love what I'm seeing from from Derek so far. I tell you what, um, it was again one of the, the best experiences of my life from a from a learning standpoint, from a growing standpoint. You know, I was able to be around some some good winning football at the University of South Florida when I was a coach there. Um, you know, winning some bowl games and going eleven and one and stuff like that. But you know, to turn that program around at Howard with Coach Larry Scott and those group of men was amazing. You know, they hadn't won a conference championship in thirty years, uh, and for us to do that in, in four years. Um, but it wasn't even about us as coaches, really. It was the players, the type of players that we had. Um, and, and we had to develop those guys and to, to become what they are. But they all had a mindset that, you know, that they wanted to get that done, that they wanted to win. And they did it together. You know what I mean? We didn't have guys, you know, late or missing things. If we did, the players got it corrected. You know, so we kind of built that, that culture and foundation from Coach Scott that everything that we did was going to be stronger, was going to be tougher, was going to be more disciplined, and we was going to do it together. So it was a special, special deal that we did there that I'm hoping we can bring that kind of same mentality here to pick with Coach Narduzzi. Any final for Coach? 